when you've made the decision to migrate from or forms, you have a number of platforms available to which you can go. These are the most popular, .NET, PHP, and Java. All of these have something in common. They're all object-oriented languages. And this could be a problem if your current development team is an Oracle Forms shop alone. You have a lot of skills in SQL and PLSQL, maybe not so much in these others, so there could be a lot of retraining involved to move to one of these platforms. That could be costly. Additionally, these other platforms are not as declarative as you would see in Oracle Forms. The .NET developers are always quick to point out that's not true. We can drag and drop items onto the page. We can do things that's declared. And that's true to a certain extent, the UI side of things, right? But with forms, we were able to you know, add a data block, map out the items, and all the DML, the actual data, uh, the, the DML operations going against the database were handled for us. That was very declarative. But with .NET, you're still going to have to do some additional work with the logic layer to, to tie in DML operations against the database. So it's not as declarative and you could lose some productivity moving to one of these platforms. Also, these platforms use different data types. So if you're going to use one, you'll have to get used to data type conversion. It's not as seamless as Oracle Forms was with the Oracle database. And because it's not made by Oracle or Oracle, there will be some additional steps, some overhead, in getting down to those underlying database features. And finally, none of these options include built-in support or a tool to assist you in your conversion from forms to one of these platforms. But there is another option, and that's Apex. Apex targets the rapid application development environment. It targets the same environment that the forms developers are really working on. This image here shows the sweet spot of development using Apex. And I like to describe this usually in, in terms of time. When you have in the upper right hand corner the enterprise developer, you see .NET and Java. These are projects, you know, these languages are good for projects typically lasting about 12 months or longer. Then you have Apex and Oracle Forms very close together, along with some of these scripting languages like PHP. These are really good for projects that typically last about a couple weeks to several months. And then on the bottom here, there are just some desktop type databases, good for a few days to a few weeks. So these are the sweet spots for these languages. Now that's not to say that you couldn't use Application Express or Forms for, for these longer duration projects for the enterprise level development. You could, and in fact there are plenty of examples out there of that, uh, and for some, some of the smaller ones as well. They're both great, but this is just the sweet spot that you target. Side-by-side -side comparison of the two, Oracle Forms and Apex. They have a couple similarities at first. They're both very declarative. They both work with SQL and PLSQL as the primary languages. When we get down into the user interface, we start to see some differences. And Forms, again, it was just a Java app with no HTML involved. But with Apex, we do get that HTML-based solution that a lot of clients are looking for. When it comes to page layout, Forms was all about windows and canvases to lay everything out. And with Apex, it goes down to pages and regions. We use pages and regions to control the flow through an application in Apex. When it comes to page layout, uh, the, the precision you can use within forms is actually kind of nice. You can go down to the pixel level to align things in Apex, and with any traditional HTML-based solution, you rely more on the, the way the browser renders the HTML, so there are some differences. Client side field control in forms, I believe there's over 300 triggers at this point to control the client side interaction that you use in forms. With Apex, you're going to have to eventually learn a third language, if it's JavaScript, and that's how we get that client side interactivity in an HTML based application, if I know JavaScript, and eventually then with Ajax as well. 
without a silver light or something like that in the future? Silverlight is sort of Microsoft's equivalent to Adobe Flash, right? And these are really completely different platforms. You can integrate Flash or Silverlight modules or applications in with Apex, but they're really different platforms. In general, you're going to need one of the other. Web service support uh, it works in both, so you don't have to worry about that. With Apex right now in the current build, 3.2, we have support for SOAP-based web services uh, to consume them. And with four, we're also going to see the ability to consume REST-based web services. Charting and forms, you use the BI Beam. And Apex, we use Flash Charts, powered by an engine called AnyChart. And both can produce rather sophisticated charts. The next three, charting, I'm sorry, locking, Database connections and concurrent user support, these are all kind of interrelated in one form or another. And I want to say first that on the APEX side, it's, it's true for APEX, but these are also true for any other solution, any traditional HTML based solution. So if you, if you go to Java or .NET, you'll find the same there. These are, these are big differences. So we start with locking. In forms, you have a lot of options. You can use Pessimistic, optimistic, or custom locks. Now, pessimistic was the key there. You're actually able to go at the database level and lock a row, prevent other users from updating it. And you could span that over several different windows. You know, transactionally, you were you were able to do that. With Apex, you're not really able to do that, and it's because connections to the database are made just for split seconds. You connect. You do the transaction, generate the HTML, and go on to the next page, disconnecting from the database. So you did have an additional option in the forms applications for pessimistic locking. And Apex we use something called optimistic locking. We're sort of hoping that you no know, problems will ever occur, no lost updates or anything like that. But in the instance that it does, there's built-in protection against sending that DML into the database. An error will be returned. The user will have to go back and refresh the data they were looking at. And then they can connect. Also, they both support custom locking. So if you'd like to create any custom locking where you know, present screens that allow users to maybe add a lock to some component, or maybe specify a reason for which they're locking it, anything like that you can do as well. Uh, both 